Did you miss your brother last three weeks? Forget about it. Do you feel like you're going to have heat stroke? Forget about it. Do you plan on going outside the whole summer? Uh... No. <laughs> Netflix and chill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> My feet burn. What are you even doing? <laughs> the top, the top I know, part. I know, I know. And I was like, I can't deal with this. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 20th episode. 20th episode. Is this really the 20th? This is the 20th episode of God damn. God damn. And today we thought, you know, it's, it's a nice, it's, it's summer, man. It's summer in New York City. Where's the place we can head out to? City Field. You know, directly under the sun as well. And under the American flag. Oh, God bless. God, wait, is it really here? What? Where's the American flag? It's right there. Oh, I thought you meant... Oh. Wow, nice job. Yo, man, he struck it. <laughs> Yo, it's fucking hot. Yeah, I know, it's so hot. Ooh. It is Ooh. incredibly hot. You know, I, I mean, hey, I'm not complaining. I mean, I am. But, like, I wouldn't complain about this because you know how cold it was. Oh, it was freezing. It's freezing. I went to two extremes, man. Like, yeah, it was free- February I, and March were, were just horrible yeah. freezing temperatures. And then now I'm sweating bullets and my heat, my, my heat are on fire. There we go. My heat <laughs> and my heat are on fire, fire yeah. <laughs> Remember, hell is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, I don't forget that for a minute. No. Hell no. is hot, ladies and gentlemen. Hell, hell is, is hot. hot. <laughs> In case you didn't know, we want to remind you. Hell, hell is, is hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> that dude was hilarious, man. Yeah, oh my god. So it's been three weeks, bro. Yeah, I haven't seen you in so long. We haven't seen each other at all in the month of June. The yeah. last time I saw you, it was still May. Yeah, it was. And we still had school, I'm pretty sure. No, 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 we were done. Oh, I don't think I was done. Oh, I was right. definitely you not were, done. You were getting into finals. Yeah, I was just getting into finals. That's right. Yeah. How'd that go? It's great. I loved it. I loved my finals. I did really well. No one else in this world is going to look like that. <laughs> so finals went well. Uh-huh. Uh, you uh-huh. did your own episode. Of course. How was that experience? Interesting. It was very hot. I, I, may, I, I might even say even hotter. It was hotter than this. I think so, because I was in. I did it inside in my brother's room. Oh, that's right. And the door was closed, no AC. It was hot that day. I was sweating. I was suffocating. My life was about to end. So it's funny, I had a similar experience because I also did it inside a room with no AC. Yeah. Because I did it in my head. Like, because to get the perfect sound, you need nothing going on around it, which is interesting because now we're doing it like. Subway is yep. going to be a We have no idea how audio is going to sound. Like yeah, this. we have no idea. This is literally like a test trial. But you know what? It's not windy outside. Hell no. I mean, it is now. I, mean, it, <laughs> I like it. There's a little bit of a breeze, but it's not windy outside, so we don't need a wind cover or anything. I wish. All we got is the train, and there might be a concert later on. Yeah. So it's 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 pretty lit. You know, I, I like this idea. Yeah, it is lit. My so shoe's going to get on fire. <laughs> So we went through three episodes. This is our third episode that me and you are both gonna be hot for one, me for another, and now we're doing it together. Yep, awesome. We're both gonna be <laughs> sweaty. It's gonna be great. We're gonna lose some weight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the water weight's gonna be gone by the end of the episode. <laughs> I won't have any. I'm gonna be so dehydrated. It's gonna be so, so bad. So the interesting thing about New York City, as we mentioned, is winters are cold. The summers are hot. And summers are hot. Not only are they hot, they're smelly. Oh yeah, they can be a smelly. Oh, you'll, like see, sh- you'll see a video hopefully as well. Like aside, uh, Along with this video, for those listening audio-wise, we are recording a video as well on YouTube. Uh-huh. Um, so, but there is also gonna hopefully be a video of me and Pranav venturing to Best Buy to get the microphone that's right next to us. Yes, this is an hour child. It's a foster child. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a receipt. <laughs> Wait, was it a receipt? Oh, it was my uh, my bubble tape. 
receipt. So good. <laughs> that would have been so random if I just took a leaf. <laughs> oh yeah. It's gonna get like room temperature hot it soon. Basically is already. That's disgusting. Yeah it is. That is so bad. This balls are so slimy. Oh Jesus Christ. That is Thank you, David. Thank you for telling us that. I thought they should know. You know I have those same shorts at home? Are they dockers? I think so. I like these. They're pretty comfortable. This whole outfit is just completely different for me, so. Mm. Yeah, he's kind of wearing, like, things that I usually wear. Hey, hey. What? Unfortunately, it's true. Yeah, it's true. You look that at shirt you got looks the... way too heavy for today, though. Oh, no. It is. It definitely is. But it's soaking up my sweat. So it's okay. <laughs> but to go back to what we were saying, summers are hot, winters are cold. Uh-huh. That's the interesting thing about New York City is there's things to do in New York City. The winter, there's winter activities. Yes. When you have a, like, six-inch thick, so thick of layer. Uh-huh. Yeah, you could roll around. In the snow. Yeah. You could go ice skating in Bryant Park. Yeah, fall, fall down a road, a hill. <laughs> visit the tree at uh, Rockefeller Center. Oh, yeah. There's a lot to do in New York City in the winter. But there's a lot to do in New York City in the summer, too. Yes, there is. So, me and Pinal went through the hassle of coming up as a plane goes over us with five places to go in New York City. So you don't need to go on that plane. Hell no. I mean, unless you live. That's unless you true. don't live. Unless here. you're, like, visiting. Yeah. That's cool, too. If you are That's visiting, awesome too. welcome. Thank you for taking a plane. And not hey. swimming all the way here. Hey, hey, come on, come on. What? What's wrong with swimming? Well, I took a bath in that river over there that you will see in the vlogs. It was great, uh, but I would not recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Lost a limb, obviously you can't see it anymore. Yeah, uh, because, uh... Uh, anyways. But, uh, that's beside the point. Okay, so, besides that... Now we look at the five places in New York City to go in the summer in the when summer. hell is hot. Of course. Well, you know, obviously you got to start off with Coney Island. All right. Who wouldn't go to Coney Island in the summer? I remember I got actually got Spider-Man. I won a Spider-Man from one of those games there. Really fun. I lost a Spider-Man though. Poor thing. Probably dead somewhere. Anyways, <laughs> obviously when you go to Coney Island, you got to go on the Coney Island Roller coaster. It's a cyclone. The cyclone. Is it yes. still called cyclone? Yes. Okay, yes, it cool. is. Just sure. And uh, it is a little scary because it's uh, made out of wood, not like yeah. a typical uh, roller coaster in like at like Six Flags, you know. Yeah. But it's cool. I think it's very cool. I've been on it maybe once in my lifetime, uh, and I was very young. I didn't die, obviously, so I would highly recommend. It. And of course, speaking of the the cyclone. You could also go to MCU Park and see the yes. Brooklyn Cyclones, which are the, uh, what are they, triple A? Single A. Single A team for the New York Mets. Who play at City, City Field, Field, which is my first place. So, one of the things about City Field is the home of the New York Mets. Right yeah, you. I love you. We have met our second place. I love you. <laughs> it has a capacity of 45,000 people. 45,000. I, I thought it was less. Thousand. I was surprised. I thought it was less. I yeah, it was me cool. too. I mean, they did invest a one point something billion. So, uh. Four levels of seating. Uh, has a field level, uh, 200 section, 300 section, and a 400 section. Four levels. Big deal. Yeah, boy. The big deal is, as you can see, there's two promotions right behind us the Yachts Weekend and the Post Game Concerts. Those are two of the many things that City Field does during or after their games. Just some highlights. Free Shirt Fridays, July 1st, 8th, 29th, August 12th, 16th, September 2nd, 16th, and 23rd. They will be giving away shirts for every attendant at the game on every Friday. Just letting you know, it will be an extra large size shirt. Is it always extra it's large? It's always extra large. Perfect for me. Just wash it a lot and it will shrink. <laughs> <laughs> or just wear it as like a sleepwear. It's really good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> another big one, fireworks night. July 2nd versus the Cubs. And they will also have another one on September, September 3rd. 3rd. So 
that's a, that's a pretty cool one. He's going to the one on the second. I want to go to the one on the second because Ashley wants to go, but uh, we'll see how money is working. Yeah, boy. <laughs> um, another thing, Piazza Weekend. On Piazza Weekend, we will be celebrating number 31. 31. For his achievements. And we, they will have a replica jersey on Friday, an on-field ceremony and a commemorative baseball card on Saturday, and a Piazza bobblehead on the Sunday game. That is awesome. Um, they have a Sticks post-game concert August 13th. Matt Harvey bobblehead day is August 27th, and the last game is September 25th. Obviously, so, uh, Matt. That's, that's what's going on in City Field. Uh, just some other things. In case you're wondering, City Field, the Yankee Stadium, you only want to go to one game, maybe. I don't know what you're doing with your life, but whatever. Uh, City Field, to me, without bias towards the Mets, is hands down one of the best, is, is hands down the better stadium. Especially as, in terms of food. We have a lot of food. And that's what food. I was just about to get to. We got Shane Shack, Two Boots, McFadden's, Mr. Softy, Palafrey's Burgers, and that's only a few of the things that they have. That's oh, only a few yeah. names. Along oh, with that, yes. the Jackie Robinson Rotunda is right behind us with the Hall of Fame and the Met Shop. City Field has a lot going on. Don't miss out. And you ladies out there, just letting you know, there's nothing better than a woman in Mets gear. <laughs> <laughs> What's our next place? What's number three? All right, of course. Number three. Of course. It's its 125th anniversary, so we got to talk about it. The Botanical Gardens up in the Bronx. I the BX. BX. I don't even live there, but I, I knew that. I live right next to it, actually. Yeah, it's actually very, very beautiful. 250 acres of flowers. That's wonderful. You know, bring your wife there, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever you want. Bring everybody. Bring everybody. Bring, bring your whole friend. family. Bring your child. Bring all the friends. Everyone. Just don't pick the flowers. No. Don't do that. Don't touch them. And of course, the one thing that they have that I like a lot is that they have a lot of summer concert evenings. I think that's really. What are some of the concerts? I actually don't know. Damn. <laughs> It's it's nothing too popular, but it exists. Is it like like headline concerts, like people concerts, like like like? Is, well, that's a weird way of going about it. Yeah, because like <laughs> every it's always. But is it like is it like concert like uh, like a classical concert or is it more of contemporary? It, it it varies. It kind of varies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, and I mean, just in general, it's beautiful. It's something to do in the summer, especially like. You know, in the winter, you know, I'm sure there, it's difficult to keep those flowers up yeah. and alive. You know, botanical gardens looks wonderful during the summer. Yeah. Definitely a must see. It you have to go. You must. I guarantee you will have a great time. Right next to it is the Bronx Zoo. Definitely something that people yeah. should go. If you're a student, actually, it's free admittance into the Bronx Zoo. Um, if you're a student at Fordham, it is deducted admission into botanical. Mm. Pretty sure. So, definitely look into that. Our next place is another place to go watch and not touch. The Intrepid Museum. Of the course. Intrepid. Oh, I love that place. It's open Monday to Friday from 10 to 5, Saturday and Sunday 10 to 6. New York City's Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum Complex is an educational and cultural nonprofit institution centered on the aircraft carrier Intrepid. The mission of the museum is to promote the awareness and understanding of history, science, and service through its collections, exhibitions, and programming in order to honor our heroes, educate the public, and inspire our youth. God bless America. Join us for our dynamic, interactive, and educational journey for all ages. The U.S. premiere of Star Trek, the Star Trek Fleet Academy experience, opens July 9th with tickets on sale now. Join us for our family astronomy nights or our 21 plus Astro Cafe events all summer long. Hosted by special guests like Gene Dalkoff, one of the first scientists to work on the study of holograms. Ooh. Lastly, save the date. Our annual Space and Science, Space and Science Festival is July 14th through 17th. Join us to learn how artists at NASA Intrepid scientific, interpret scientific data and hear track talks and with leading scientists like MIT astrophysicist Sarah Seeger. And lastly, the thing that actually put it on the list for me, the summer movie series, which started May 29th as they always started with Top Gun. Ah, Top Gun. Great movie. Wonderful but movie. 
the movies that are going on after that, July 7th, Star Trek uh, from 2009, Young Brash, James T. Kirk, and cool, logical Spock must move past their rivalry to defeat a time-traveling Romulan? I don't watch Star Trek. Oh, you suck. <laughs> I stick to the wars. July 14th, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. July 21st, Galaxy Quest. Uh, Friday, July 29th, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And Friday, August 6th, Big Hero 6. You will find me mm. there, definitely. I have not seen that movie. I'm going to go love see it. it with Ashley. So, there you go. There's the Intrepid. And, of course... We must never forget this last place to what visit. Is it? it is too obvious. What is it? Central Park. Oh. Okay. Central fucking park. I should have known that. Yes. Well, it is it is the place to go during the summer. Not not only because it's hot, okay? You can you can tan under the sun like we are doing right now. We're not burning, thankfully. I mean I'm I feel like I'm being cooked, Close. but like, you know, I'm not burning. Because, you know, my melanin is keeping me safe. But uh, what else can you do? You can also run around. You can go for a, a walk, bike too. Bike ride. Bike ride, that is true. I love biking. So you can bike around Central Park. And what else? You can also go to the Central Park Zoo. Beautiful thing. Do you know why? why? Do you know why, Dave? Because they have the motherfucking penguins. Penguins. I love my penguins. Penguins are freezing. While hell is hot, penguins are freezing, and we wish we were in a freezer right now. Yes, we do. Boy, do I wish Inside. I was in. I wish I was in my AC-filled room and just, like, dying of cold instead of heat. I'm yep. so hot right now. So what we're going to do right now is we created a list for y'all who are just like me right now that are at home and are going to stay home with the top five shows, in our opinion, <sighs> to binge watch. The summer. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, so what? I was going to pass me the trusty of iPhone. Course. And I'm going to start with number one. And number one has been hyped up a lot recently. Blessed be thy and hands. For good reason. Season four of Orange is the New Black came out. And for those who don't know, Orange is the New Black features Piper Chapman as a public relations executive with a career and a fiance when her past suddenly catches up to her. In her mid-30s, she is sentenced to spend time in a minimum security. Oh, we're recording a podcast. We're doing an interview, a podcast. Yeah. For what? We start uh, our show. Yeah. Our show. <laughs> nice. On what YouTube? It's on iTunes. Yep. iTunes. Yeah. Hey, I see. Okay. Thank Don't you. forget about you it. You come here all the time? No, it's no, actually no. the first time we're recording in front of City Field. Okay, cool. Uh, Thank you. Uh, right now, we're talking about top five things to do in New York City throughout the summer and top five shows to binge watch should you not want to go outside in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, man. Don't walking, forget man. to mention to come to a Mexican. Of course. of course. That is one of the best feelings you could ever have. Definitely. Of course. That's awesome. That was cool. That was actually pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so... We'll get back to Piper Chapman once Pranab opens his phone. Do you like my background? What is it? It's uh, it's actually uh, my boy um, Eminem. No, that's Eminem. That's John Bader. Oh, that's John. Well, I look the house. Have <laughs> shades on. I had the house in the background. It looked battered when I didn't have when I had the shades on. When I took them off, I saw it wasn't. What the fuck is John Bader doing? He's uh, mowing the lawn. His lawn right. with his uh, new uh, Steph Curry shoes. So. The show is Orange is the New Black, and it features Piper Chapman as a public relations executive with a career and a fiance when her past suddenly catches up with her. In her mid 30s, she was sentenced to spend time in a minimum security women's prison in Connecticut for an association with a drug runner 10 years earlier. This Netflix original series is based on the book of the same title, Forced to Trade Power Suits for Prison Orange. Chapman makes her way through the correction system and adjusts to life behind bars, making friends with the many eccentric, unusual, and unexpected people she meets. Just like the eccentric, unexpected people you meet when you record in City Field. Of course, yeah. Yeah, life <laughs> season is crazy. Season four has reached, has received such a great um, uh, review. A lot of people have uh, mentioned the racial tensions uh, and mentioned how egos and characters uh, are 
accentuated even more. Piper isn't really the main character anymore. She's not the central um, figurehead. I haven't watched season four yet. I watched the other three. I personally liked all of them. Season three was a bit of a lull, but from what people have said, season four is a return to the old, with fresh, new, energetic characters to look forward to. That's my spiel. Orange is the new black. Peasy, what you got? Yo, I got an old show right here. All right. Himium. <laughs> I, I was like, what is that? When you sent it to me last night, I was like, what? How I met your mother. How did you meet me? What? Uh, well, one day, I, I was just, yeah, you know, walking home with you. Wait, I don't even know how I actually met your mother. I think you met my mother that day. What day? Oh, that's yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. I think that's how you met my mother. That was a, wow, that was a, an interesting night. Anyway, <laughs> so you tell us a little bit about how, you met my, how, how I met your mother. Okay, yeah, that it is a great show. Obviously... You know, the ending was not so great. I would not recommend watching that episode. But, even though the sole purpose of the show was for that episode. But, anyways. It's it's pretty much a show about Ted Mosby and his friends. Well, mostly Ted Mosby. It's just him talking to his kids about how he met their mother. And how he ended up... Okay, uh, <laughs> anyways. It's pretty much Ted Mosby, his friends... Lily and Marshall, who are the cutest couple in the world. I, I, I aspire to be just like them. They're so adorable. I love Lily and Marshall. And of course, Barney and Robin and occasionally her her uh, boyfriends, of course. And Barney's um, random hookups. So Barney's not the second character. I'm sorry? So Barney is not the second character. No, he's not. That's it, because that's, that's who Neil Patrick... Uh, Harris plays, right? That's his name? Yes, Neil Patrick Harris plays Barney. So Barney Stinson. Because interestingly enough, I thought he was the main character of the show. Really? I, I've never watched it. No, it's always Ted Mosby and his universe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the universe. That's why I'm meeting this person. The universe <laughs> controls this. <laughs> so I'll go on to my third show, and that is going to be a Amazon Prime show, actually, called The Man in the High Castle. And this is a show I kind of just stumbled upon. I wasn't really like, I had heard about it. I wasn't much into it. And uh, I do not regret any of the countless hours that I, wa that I spent watching it. An alternate, an alternate, <laughs> an alternate look at this. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Wait. I am burning, hurry up. <laughs> an alternate look at his. Japan and Germany took over the United States. The flag of Nazi ruled, ruled, Amer of Nazi ruled America of 1962 and the man in the high castle has red and white stripes and a swastika on a field of blue. But oh, yeah. even more chilling is how fascism has stamped itself upon American popular culture. People still go to Rock Hudson movies, but they open with Nazi propaganda newsreels. There are cop shows on TV. One is about the adventures of the Reich Patrol. Times Square is still riotous and noisy, but one blazing sign reads, Work will set you free, which is the slogan that hung above Auschwitz. God this show damn. has received an 8.1 on IMDb, 4.5 on Amazon, and a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. It is available to stream on Amazon, on Amazon Prime Video. And again, it is a show that I just stumbled upon, and I do not regret watching. If you're looking for something that has a lot of thrill to it, keeps you in suspense, and that you're going to be genuinely uh, happy with watching afterwards, it's going to unsettle you. If you're if you're weak at heart, I do not suggest you watch it, but if you're looking for something that's going to keep you on your feet, The Man in the High Castle, streaming on Amazon Prime, amazing show, definitely recommend it. Number one. What's number four? Number four. <laughs> Our iPhone. Excuse me, I wish you had a fucking iPhone. No, fuck that shit. Okay, ready? Uh, okay. Really? Yeah. You would not want an iPhone? No. Okay. Ready? Three? Okay. Three, two, one. All right. Numero. 
four. Cuatro. 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 Ready? Yeah. Number four. This is also an old, this show is actually still running. I think it's hilarious. I used to be ashamed of watching it, you know, but a, a lot of people have kind of, you know, grown into liking it. It's a really good show. It's called New Girl oh. with Zoe Deschanel. Great, great show. So it's essentially, all right, ready? This is the uh, synopsis. After going through a rough breakup, awkward and upbeat Jess moves in with three single guys. Uh, intelligent and witty Nick is an underachiever who took the bartender off ramp on his road to success. Schmidt, who is my favorite character, I love him, okay. obsesses over his social standing and looks at Jess as a personal project. <laughs> With Schmidt, uh, Schmidt, Schmidt, he actually works at a uh, magazine, uh, a, and mo every single, it's actually the opposite of what you'd expect at a company where every single worker there is female and he's the only male in the board. And it's hilarious, and they treat him, they kind of put him down just like how you expect many top guys in the companies to be, to put down women. And I think it's hilarious. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> he's, he's, he's one of the, he's kind of like that flamboyant character in the show, but he's a womanizer. He's straight as hell, but he does have that flamboyant uh, characteristic. Um, anyways, Winston is a competitive former athlete who, after realizing he will never become a pro, moves into the loft. Together with Jess's best friend, Cece, they bond to form an unlikely dysfunctional family. And the thing is with Cece, uh, e even though, you know, she and Jess are best friends, they are two completely different people. Uh, Jess is this awkward school teacher, whereas Cece is a hot model. So, and she has all these model friends that Schmidt just loves. Schmidt and Cece dated for a while. Not gonna get into that. I love their relationship, but yeah, that's the show. It's hilarious. I think it's great. And obviously this coach, coach is also a great character. But yeah, I, it's a great show. I recommend watching it. I dig it. My last show, it's, it's not really a show per se. Um, it's, it just actually came out on uh, ABC. And it's been airing on uh, ESPN. It's now available to stream on ESPN uh, Watch App. And it is OJ Made in America. It is the defining cultural tale of modern America, a saga of, ra a saga of race, celebrity, media, violence, and the criminal justice system. And two decades after its unforgettable climax, it continues to fascin uh, fascinate, polarize, and even, yes, develop new chapters. Now Ooh, the producers yeah. of ESPN's award uh, Award-winning 30 for 30 have made it the subject of their first document, first documentary event and most ambitious project yet. From Peabody and Emmy Award-winning director Ezra Edelman, it's OJ Made in America. OJ Made in America. I've been following it for the past couple weeks. Um, it's astounding. It's. Is it really? It really is. It, it it tackles so many issues, as it said there, of race, of culture of the justice system in total. Um, I found that the documentary as a series was an interesting thing. I, I looked at it, uh, you know, I, I feel like one of the interesting things is we live in an era that can't keep an attention span for more than like an hour yeah. on a movie. So um, <laughs> to see this documentary, it's five parts, two hours each. So that's a 10 hour documentary series. Yeah. So I was very intrigued to see how I, I myself would be able to keep on it, and I did. It was it was a great uh, experience to watch how people, how these um, producers interpreted OJ and how they interpreted him within the context of America at the time. Um, it was interesting to see him rise in USC and see him after that. So definitely something to watch. Keep an eye out for it. It's not really a show. But if you're looking for 10 hours of stuff to do in your freezing cold room with air conditioning, I definitely suggest OK Made in America. Yes. That, I heard it's a really good show. I've never seen it. I don't I don't really watch a lot of TV. I usually stick to YouTube. And that's what I usually binge watch. I'll sit there and I'll go through the recommended stuff and get into the creepy side of YouTube. It's oh very weird. Very weird. I would not recommend doing it. Please. Let's, let's avoid creepy sides. We've mentioned five places that want to go. 
Mm-hmm. Or that we that you can go in New York City. Yes. We've mentioned that one place to go in New York City, which is your room, or maybe you're somewhere else. That's cool too. Oh, in your living room. And we've mentioned that you should watch those shows. Now it's time to take that plane. Let's get out of New York City for a bit. Let's get out of the sun. There's one place that you want to go outside uh, of New York City. Okay. One place I want to go to. Like, this is one place that, that I want to leave this country and I want to go to Italy. Italia. Okay. Italia. Italia. Si, buongiorno, come stai? I want to go to Italy one day. I love that country. I love their culture. I love that it's so family oriented. And I love their food. I love it so much. Um, that's one place that I definitely want to go. Uh, how about you? You know, I, I thought about it for a while, and I thought about the fact that I already I'm going I'm going to DR this summer, um, in July, mm-hmm. two three weeks away. I'm excited for that. Um, I won't miss you. Of course you won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought about inside the country, um, and there's just so many places I want to go that I actually there's something I want to do before the summer ends. I'd love to take a cruise. <gasps> Does scare me a little bit. I, it, does, it scares me a bit too, but you know what? Uh, I, I've centered my summer around one theme, and that's pro- and that's trying to think. Yeah. And I went to Atlantic City, somewhere that I didn't really think I would go as a 19 year old. Um, I went to Atlantic City, I enjoyed it a lot. I've been going to different places to eat every day. Yeah. Uh, it's expensive, and that's the thing. Like, I realize trying new things is an expensive task, but it's rewarding in the end and sometimes you realize that you know we're young we still have a lot of time and we're not I'm, I'm not at the place where vacationing is me just resting on a beach yeah I want to go out I want to do stuff I want to have adventures I want to tell my kids I did this I did that when I was this age so that's where I am right now and I would love to take a cruise right now I'm thinking to the Caribbean that sounds awesome I'm not gonna lie I, my, my parents have actually been thinking about going on the cruise, but I've just been like, oh. I don't know how I feel. I don't even know how it floats. <laughs> I mean, it's a huge boat. I'm pretty sure, like, how do how are we, like, sinking? I know, I'm pretty sure we float. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure we would be able to float if yeah. you just didn't, like, stress out. I mean, I think but, it's like, all density. Yeah. But at the end of the day, once you get on your boat... And you know you have your fear of, of heights and stuff and your fear of, like, dying and everything. You know what you need to do with it? <laughs> All you what? need to do is forget about it. Thank fucking God we're done with this. Thank you, man. Let's hope I hit the record.